Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to day 22 of Decktober. Today we're looking at a $50 budget, Sithis Harvest's Hand. Sithis says whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain a life and draw a card. This deck is all about playing every enchantment possible to draw through our deck whilst also gaining as much life as possible so we can use those big life gain win cons for the win. Now, let's get right into the budget deck tech. As always, we're starting off hot with the ramp, and in this budget brew, we've got Findhorn and Lanawa Elves, both one drop mana dorks to tap for a forest. There's Sanctum Weaver to tap for X mana, where X is the number of enchantments you control, and Thought Vessel to tap for a colorless, also giving us no maximum hand size, which is important as we'll be drawing so many cards off Sithis, we don't want to be heading for discard every turn. We've got Commander Classic Cultivate to search our library for two basic lands, putting one on the field tapped and the other in your hand, and Rampant Growth to search our library for a basic land, putting it onto the field tapped. There's Commander Sphere to add white or green, with the added option to sack for some card draw, and Celesnia Signet to pay, tap and add Celesnia. We have Abundant Growth to Enchant Land, drawing us a card and allowing Enchanted Land to tap for one mana of any colour, and Fertile Land to give its controller an extra mana of any colour when Enchanted Land is tapped. There's Gift of Paradise that ETB is giving us 3 life, an Enchanted Land, 2 mana of any colour, and Unbridled Growth to give Enchanted Land the option to tap for a mana of any colour, as well as a card draw option. Cards like this are essential, as they're not only ramping us, but they're enchantments that'll also trigger off Sithis to gain us more life and draw us a card. There's Urban Utopia to ETB drawing us a card, again giving us that mana fixing option, and Verdant Haven to ETB give us two life and give us extra mana of any colour when Enchanted Land is tapped for mana. For the last two Enchanted Lands there's Wild Grove to add a forest whenever Enchanted Land is tapped for mana, and Wolf Willow Haven to again add a forest whenever Enchanted Land is tapped for mana. Finally, we have Soul Ring, because Soul Ring. Before we get into all things life gain, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for all things MTG. It's completely free to do and it helps our channel grow and grow as we head towards 2000 subscribers. As we just said, now we're looking at all of the life gaining strategies we have in this budget brew. First up is classic combo Ajani's Pride Mate to put a plus one plus one counter on it whenever you gain life, an impassioned orator that says whenever another creature ETBs you gain a life. We've got Al Said of Life's Bounty, the 1 1 life linker that you can sack to give target creature or enchantment protection from the colour of your choice until end of turn, and Archon of Sun's Grace, the flying lifelink Pegasus that creates a flying 2 2 Pegasus whenever an enchantment hits the field under your control. We have huge wing cons in Felidar Sovereign that says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 or more life, you win the game, and Aether Flux Reservoir to gain you a life when casting spells and pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to target creature or player. We'll have so many enchantments in this deck, life loving enchantments too, that will trigger Sithis and allow us to draw through our deck super quick to find these essential pieces. There's Lathiel the Bounteous Dawn, that at the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, distribute that many plus one plus one counters amongst creatures you control, and Nykthos Paragon, this is when you gain life, put that many plus one plus one counters on each creature you control, doing so once per turn. We've added in Daxos, Blessed by the Sun, that gains you a life whenever another creature you control ETBs or dies, and Prosperous Innkeeper, also gaining you a life whenever one of your creatures hits the battlefield. It also gives you a lovely treasure token too. You love to see it. For some life gaining board wipes, we have Fumigate to destroy all creatures, gaining one life for each creature destroyed this way, and Paraseline to destroy all enchantments, gaining one life for each enchantment destroyed this way. For the last creature life lover, there's Treslasara Moon Dancer. This is whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on Treslasara and scry one. We've also packed in millions of life loving enchantments, first with Abiding Grace to gain one life on your end step or return target card with mana value 1 or less from your graveyard to the field. That is also perfect if you keep wanting to bring back Al Said to have us some sacrificial protection every turn, and Griffin Airy to create your 2-2 flying griffin on your end step if you've gained 3 or more life this turn. There is Cosmos Elixir to gain you 2 life on your end step if your life total is under 40, otherwise drawing you a card, and Armadillo Cloak to give enchanted creature plus 2 plus 2 trample and when it deals combat damage you gain that much life. There's Light of Promise to Enchant Creature, with it gaining plus one plus one counters whenever you gain life, and Unflinching Courage to give Enchanted Creature plus two plus two trample and lifelink. Remember, 
Not only are these enchantments boosting our life total rapidly, but whenever we play these enchantments, they're triggering Sithis, drawing us cards, gaining us life, which could then trigger off even more of our permanents. Finally, there's Trudge Garden that says whenever you gain life, you may pay two. If you do, create a 4-4 Fungus token with Trample and Cleric Class to gain us even more life when we gain life, boosting our creatures and so much more life-loving goodness. Now we're looking at the rest of the enchantments packed into this budget deck. First on up is Banishing Light, the ETBs, exiling target non-land permanent until Banishing Light leaves play, and Oblivion Ring to do exactly the same. We've got Soul Snare that we can pay and sack to exile target creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker you control, and a huge enchantment All That Glitters that gives enchanted creature plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. That could be big. For some protection, there's Hyena Umbra to give enchanted creature plus one plus one first strike and that all important Totem Armor. An unquestioned authority, the ETBs drawing you a card, also giving your enchanted creature protection from creatures. There's Sigil of the Empty Throne to create you a 4 4 flying angel whenever you cast an enchantment spell, and Abundance that says if you would draw a card, you may choose land or non land, drawing cards until you draw the chosen card type. You put that card into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of your library. That is perfect if you're desperate for some ramp or need to find that win con quicker. We've got Kenrith's transformation to ETB, drawing us a card and making enchanted creature lose all abilities, becoming a 3-3 elk, and reprobation to make enchanted creature a 0-1 coward with no abilities. Perfect to put on your opponent's commander. There's Lignify to make enchanted creature a 0-4 with no abilities, and Rancor giving enchanted creature plus 2 plus 0 and trample, with that bonus that when Rancor is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you return it straight to your hand. There's Enchantress's Presence to draw a card whenever you cast an enchantment spell and Season of Growth to scry one whenever a creature ETBs under your control and draw a card when you cast a spell that targets one of your creatures. We've got Curse of Silence where you definitely want to tactically choose an opponent's commander, making that creature cost two more to cast and Spider Umbra to give enchanted creature plus one plus one reach and that beloved totem armor. For the final two, there is Sterling Grove to give our enchantment Shroud or Sack to tutor for an enchantment and Druid class to gain you some life, play some more lands per turn and make one of your lands super strong. Before we finish up with the lands, we're looking at the best of the rest. And first we have Ajani's Chosen to create a 2-2 cap token whenever an enchantment comes into play and Arasta of the Endless Web, an enchantment creature that creates you a 1-2 spider token with reach whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell. There's Mesa Enchantress to draw a card whenever you cast an enchantment spell and Satessant Champion with that constellation mechanic to put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card whenever an enchantment ETBs under your control. There's Suspend Card Resurgent Belief to return all of your enchantments from your graveyard to the battlefield, which could be absolutely mental, and Elixir of Immortality to shuffle your graveyard into your library and gain a tasty five life. Finally, there is Spellbook for some more no max hand size options. Like we said, this deck is all about playing enchantments and drawing loads of cards, so we want those cards to stay right where we can see them. As always, we're rounding off this budget deck tech with the lands, and coming in here, we've got 13 basic forest and 13 basic plains, as this deck is almost directly 50-50 with that mana. We have classic cards, command tower, and exotic orchard for that trusty mana fixing, and more commander classics in evolving wilds and terramorphic expands to sack and search for those basic lands, putting them onto the field tapped. There's blossoming sands and gray pelt refuge to ETB and gain us some more life, and Radiant Fountain for yet again even more life, and Reliquary Tower to get that sweet no maximum hand size. Finally, we've got Fortified Village for some Selesnia options, and Temple of Plenty for ETBs and you scry one. Sithis is a super interesting new commander, and one that I may have to make a full proper paper deck out of in the very near future. Check out Decktober Day 23 tomorrow, where we'll be looking at a commander that is all about that Voltron. There we have it, that is the Sithis $50 budget deck tech. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description below for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out, so I'll see you in the next video.